Blackthorn is a great one to know if you're a farvager or just someone who likes the Irish countryside. The use of blackthorn in medicine is of course very ancient. So in modern days we've been able to ascertain that the sloes and the flowers are the safe parts of the tree and all other parts of it are toxic. So while I will be mentioning traditional uses for it, uh, not all of them are good, but I will tell you which ones are. So the first one that's definitely good is slow gin. It contains vitamin C, it's also good for digestion and things like that. So if you're a drinker, that's a good one to consider on a Christmas morning. Um, but slow gin also in extremely large amounts can be a laxative, so maybe it's not ideal for that. So as everything, all things in moderation, but if you're not a drinker, it's definitely one to try on occasion as well. It's really, really definitely one of the nicest drinks. Gets kind of put down in the modern age because there's so many like really sweet fancy drinks but good old slow gin you can't go wrong with that so the uses for the slow beyond the gin and things like that would be the tarts and fruits with a lot of sugar were used as a direct vitamin c so to prevent scurvy back in the day so a lot of things were used to prevent scurvy not all of them had vitamin c in them so the people who were using slows had the upper edge in that regard so as i was saying not everything we knew um, back then is actually true so the bark and thorns were used for astringency, which is like it's that kind of sharp dryness. So that astringency was used to wash out wounds, and you can do that with other astringent things like acorns or astringent plants. But you don't want to use blackthorn for that purpose because it is toxic. So as a last resort, it's something that blackthorn makers would have done in ancient times, but it's definitely not something they do today. They go to see doctors. So that's that addressed. But other uses for the thorns were, of course, for things like needles and stitching. And of course, that wasn't ideal because you can get something known as blackthorn poisoning when you get punctured with a blackthorn. So master craftsmen, blackthorn stick makers, anyone who's working with the wood has to be highly aware of that and needs to be a really skilled craftsperson for that regard. So definitely when you're farvaging for your slows, because you've seen this video, definitely don't get stuck by the thorns because you might get sepsis. So I know that's a lot of scary stuff, but it tells you how amazing this plant is that people still chose to eat it, still chose to go through the effort to cook it and preserve it and cultivated it into so many of the foods we love today, such as plums. So uses for the flowers, which are safe, is women used it on their skin, which you'll also see with elderflower and many other Irish white blossomed trees. So if you're going to look at the uses for the berries, that's the main one. So of course, full of antioxidants full of brilliant things for your skin health, your oral health in particular, is what it was associated with here in Ireland, to treat things like scurvy. So a lot of the medicinal things made with slow could be given to children and the elderly with very little argument. So that's great. So the gin was used for distress in the belly, so like digestive issues, and the general slows themselves were used for oral health. So think of like uh, tooth health, your gums, your jaw, everything going on there, it helped. And you can't eat the seeds though, so definitely remove the seeds, cook the berries if you're going to use them. So the flowers were used in women's skincare and it would be applied to the face just for your general complexion. So in the modern day we know that that is safe, the jury's out on how well it works, but you're putting antioxidants and stuff on your face, it probably does have some small effect, but personally it's not one I'd recommend. But that is a major historical use for blackthorn here in Ireland, was women using the flowers, so we have to mention it. So not all of the uses for blackthorn that I mentioned are, histor are relevant today. They're more historical, but they're really worth knowing because they show the transition of knowledge about this tree over the ages as we cultivated it into something more edible, kind of just right off the bat. But it stayed around, we kept it for its wood, we continue to use it for food because it is such a wonderful food. So despite all the drawbacks of you could get poisoned if you get punched by the, the thorns and things like that. If you take precautions when you're foraging, you're going to have a really, really good experience because this is one of the better wild foods available. No question about it. Because it contains vitamin C, um, it means that in winter time when other things might be used up, such as the blackberry jam that the children might be going for, you'll have your store of slows. So maybe you don't need that in the modern age, but nice to have the option. I hope you enjoyed this little introduction to blackthorn medicine. It was a very interesting topic to research and I hope you have a lovely day.